I'm Monster Mike, and this is Bronco Garage. Hey everyone, welcome back. We are here in front of James Duff for the second installment of The Teacher's Pet, a 1973 Ford Bronco owned by Tony Mele. We're gonna be installing the brand new bump steer eliminator heim steer system on his truck to get it driving and handling better. So we do tell people that before they install this, find out if the holes from the frame bar axle bolt are you know loose or wallered out that when you're going to be installing these parts before you tear your truck down, go ahead and give everything a wiggle of the steering wheel and look at that front end and see where everything's moving and if things need to be you know, fixed before you just add these parts on. Now that the steering system is removed, it's very important that you make sure that your pitman arm stays nice and straight. And watch the video where I show you how to straighten up your box and your steering wheel and your pitman arm. Okay, since we're gonna be removing the pitman arm and going back to a factory style, we definitely wanna make sure that everything just stays straight and we don't move it again. Now typically this track bar drop brackets can be welded in all around here. And so the easiest thing to do is just cut it off right here versus trying to cut all the welds off. Now this bracket ended up not being welded at all. So we're just gonna remove it and use the factory bracket instead. All right, so now we have the drop pitman arm off and the drop track bar bracket. It's time to go to the next step, which is removing the coil springs. And this is only if you're running a front Hellwig sway bar. If you don't have that in place, you're not going to have any issues with anything colliding or getting in the way of each other. But in this case, when you're running the front sway bar, there's a bracket that sits underneath your lower coil retainer, and it's going to be right in the way of where your steering system is going to need to basically live. In order to make this work, you're going to replace your lower coil retainer with this one that gives you that clearance by letting the steering go underneath it. We're about to mount the link right here to the new dual sport lower coil retainer and just a quick little tidbit here about this product as you can see it's replacing the mount that comes with the hellwig sway bar now hellwig offers the sway bar two different ways you can either get it to where everything's fixed and you've always got your sway bar working for you know mostly street or they also offer a option where you can quickly detach it and go off-roading it's very hard to go off-roading with your sway bar intact because you'll basically lift a tire and not have any traction. Now, what James Duff has done is if you're gonna go upgrade to the dual sport lower coil retainer, you have the option to make your fixed Hellwig sway bar quick detach now. And since you have that option, James Duff also provides a link mount up inside the fender, just like if you had the quick detach you can now swing your link up and out of the way and go off-road your Bronco. And next for the Bumpster Eliminator, the heavy-duty riser bracket. Now, there's a really nice trick about how to install this and uh, you can follow along with the instructions, but the easiest way is to grab a paint pen and you're gonna mark the perimeter everywhere it touches the axle tube. And that is where you're going to grind. So you have shiny metal and then you're going to lay a weld bead. I also like to lay a weld bead on the back side as well. Just a little makes it a little more rigid. Next, you're gonna use your paint pen and you're gonna mark here and then you're gonna cut that off. And once that's off, you're going to cut a little more off with this bracket out of the way so then you can weld that stub through this hole right here. Good. 
just like that and rose that weld that baby up and you're done Okay, so I've got the axle prepped and I'm about ready to place the riser bracket over the existing bracket and tack weld it and then make sure it's straight and go ahead and weld it up. Now, just to reiterate what we've done here is we've actually cut the factory bolt and we've cut it to where we can rosette weld this bracket onto that bolt. Now that's one method, but there's another method that James Duff offers and that's removing the stock bolt by grinding the welds off of the bolt head behind this bracket and then punching it out and then replacing it with this bolt here. You can do either way and there is trade-offs. If you remove this and use that, then it will secure this bracket in place and make it easier to weld. However, it is very difficult to get this bolt to remove, so it can be easier if you're willing to just mount it here and get it straight and tack it and check it before you weld it up. One of the things I really like about the James Stuff riser bracket is the way it's designed. It actually gives you all the clearance you need for an aftermarket style lower coil retainer. Other brackets on the market actually interfere with this and you have to modify the bracket for it to fit. Or if you're not using these and then you already have this installed, then you have to modify it later. With James Stuff, all the parts work together. So it makes it a nice, easy in install. All right, now we got the riser bracket on and it's time to prep and paint. So depending on the level and quality of paint you want for your Bronco, depends on what you use. I'm just gonna use some Scotch-Brite and uh, some Roll Bar Chassis VHT Gloss Black. I'm about to throw some paint on there and uh, as you can see, I'm using towels and rags instead of tape to keep the paint off of other areas. And that's because I want this to actually blend in. I don't want there to be tape lines when I'm done. Now, the other thing that I need to basically full transparency here, I goofed and I didn't prep the bracket with weld primer like I did the axle before I installed it. You're gonna wanna do that because then you can prevent some rusting in certain areas once it's all together. So keep that in mind and don't be like me in this case. Next up when installing the bump steer eliminator system is the heavy duty, hassle-free adjustable track bar by James Duff. Now, they have several different options, but this is the best option they offer. In order to install this though, you're going to need a 5 8 hole at the frame for your track bar bracket. And most Broncos from 66 to 75 had a 9 16 hole. So you will have to buy a 5 8 drill bit, which is offered by James Duff. Stop there. You know why? Any more we drill out, more material comes out, the more loose the bolt gets. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to go ahead and open up the hardware bag and start installing these components on the track bar. I've got 28 and a half. This one's 28 and a quarter. So first thing we want to do is we want to roll this in. So as many threads as we can is engaged like that. And then we want to, we want to twist it out from this side until we get to 28 and a half. Now, it's really important that you have at least an inch and a half of thread engagement inside of here, 
when you've got this fully centered on the truck. If you don't, then you're gonna to wanna to remove this and thread more of this into these threads and take more out of this side of the adjustment bar in order for this to be safe and effective. Now for all of you that aren't starting with an adjustable track bar or a good well-known alignment already on the truck, or even if you're starting from scratch, you're gonna have to get your track bar length figured out a different way. And you're gonna have to do that while everything's installed on the Bronco. Now, I'm not talking about having the track bar already installed, but I am talking about having the Heim steer and the wheels and all of that in place because you need to get this axle centered underneath this frame. And in order to do that, it's gonna require some tools which I'll show you how. So we removed this drop track bar bracket off this Bronco, and this is a James Duff uh, standard style drop bracket. Uh, James Duff also offers a heavy duty bracket, but other vendors offer their variations of that as well. Most importantly though, if this is welded on here, you don't have to remove it. You don't have to cut all the welds off and you can just cut it right about here. You can cut all of this lower part off. You can use this area and mount your adjustable track bar to this. Now you are going to have to drill through this material as well as the factory bracket to uh, make the hole bigger. So it's not, you know, 9 16 anymore, it's 5 8 But this is the other part about this that I wanted to cover with you is that if you want, you can actually keep all this material in place. You do not have to remove this uh, when you go to a bump steer eliminator system. It can still hang out down there and just not be used. Uh, same thing goes for other vendors track bar drop brackets just to give you a little more tech and a little more understanding of the do's and do nots uh, for this um, definitely finding this bracket on this truck not welded was not good because without this part being welded to the factory bracket it allows it to deflect and move around and that's what can cause part of your bump steer and it can also cause death wobble So it's very important that the passenger side heim on the tie rod and drag link are installed all the way into the bar. It's also very important that your drag link is very close to the same length as your track bar. This is the time to set this length. 
All right, now we need to mount the dual sport high steer to the Bronco. And we've got a few different options from James Duff in order to do that. Now there's three here in front of me, but there's actually five total. The first one here is these three quarter bolts. Now, if you just want to drill out your knuckles and mount these bolts, that's great. You can do that. Uh, it is a little harder to get them mounted with a drill. So be careful there. Got a video on that as well. Now, this is the option that you want if you're going to go hardcore off-roading or you just want to be ready for anything. Uh, that's a great option. This is your tie rod under uh, tapered heim stud. Now, this here allows you to convert your knuckles from uh, to a heim without having to drill them out. Now, the next option, the one we're going to actually install, is the tie rod over. And this also comes two different ways. This is the uh, early Bronco version, but there's also a F-150 and a GM one ton. So if you've already drilled your knuckles out to GM one ton and you're taking that steering off and putting the dual sport on, or if you've got the F-150 or big Bronco knuckles and you want to go tie rod over, this is the option for you, but you're just going to have to choose the, you know, the, the, the larger version of these. Well, let's go ahead and get these on this uh, Bronco and uh, show you how that's done. Notice here that the Heim is twisted, so it's you know almost touching on the back and it's lifted on the front, and that's also pushing up on the Delrin. You're gonna want to loosen the jam nut and then make this sit flat so it doesn't do that. All right, so the Dual Sport Heim Steer is in and it's time to do just a few small little things and to let you know what exactly are the extra pieces for. You've also got a few extra pieces in the kit like this three quarter fine thread nut. Now you're not gonna need this with the bump steer eliminator, but if you bought the Dual Sport Heim Steer and you're installing it tie rod under, you're gonna have to use this, but check out the instructions for exactly how to install it properly. Next thing on the list, of course, is the Loctite. You don't wanna use Loctite until you have the alignment 100% done. Then you're gonna come back and you're gonna take your jam nuts and you're going to thread them out just enough so you can see the threads right there in front of your bar and you're gonna drop two or three drops of red Loctite and then you're going to tighten those jam nuts back down and make sure that they don't come loose. This is what the red Loctite's for. So right now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna tighten all these uh, junction points down so I can go and take this Bronco to the alignment shop. And once the alignment's done, I'm gonna go back through and I'm gonna mark all of the bolts with a red paint pen to verify that they do not move down the road. So it's a quick, easy visual verification for you that you can look under your Bronco and see whether those nuts or bolts are starting to get loose. And I'm gonna be putting this paint pen on the saddle bolt, the track bar lower axle bolt, as well as at the frame for the track bar. And then of course you can do the same thing anywhere there's not a cotter pin. Make sure you check your toe once the tires are back on and make sure the toe is set to an eighth inch toe in. This is at the front of the tires before driving your Bronco. You good? I'm good. 76 and 7 eighths. Okay. Yeah. 75 and I'd say 7 eighths. It's towed out. Oh yeah. All right, guys, that's a wrap. In the next video, we're going to take this Bronco down to the alignment shop and we are going to get it dialed in. It's really important that we don't skip this step and make sure you check out the video card above. It's the top five things you need to know to keep your Bronco out of the ditch. Next time on Bronco Garage. I never thought my Bronco could drive like this. Totally different ride, man. Super, super pumped. Right. I thought this was the best it was going to be. And after what we've just done to it and the adjustments we've made, we're at this place. I've never believed it could happen. 
Hey, thanks for joining us. Make sure to like and subscribe and check us out on social media as well. Look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.